Imperfect Foods and Seattle. Like literally my two favorite things in the world. Imperfect Foods, if you don't know what they are, they are all about saving food that would normally go to the trash or not be used and get it right to your doorstep and they're bringing it to Seattle in a big way, which is where I live, which is so exciting, so exciting. So in order to celebrate that, we are making Seattle favorites, like iconic Seattle foods using imperfect ingredients, which I think is really, really cool. So today we are gonna make Seattle imperfect clam chowder with garlicky bread. Mm. I'm so excited. Are you pumped about this one, Howard? I'm ready. I'm, I'm pumped. Clam chowder. All, All right. right, 15 minutes on the clock. All right, you would think clam chowder in 15 minutes is psychotic, and it is psychotic, but we are gonna do this. So, I'm gonna start with some bacon. Almost every chowder in the world, you gotta have bacon. It gives a little smoky element to it. To me, it's almost not a chowder unless it has bacon. Um, but, again, if you're kind of a plant-based eater, lose the bacon, smoked paprika. Works really well. So I'm gonna cut these into kind of bigger chunks, right? Beautiful. I'm just kind of bite-sized pieces. I'm gonna grab butter. Normally I would do some olive oil, but butter for this one. Big hunk, right into a warm pan. Bacon right in. And we're gonna let that get nice and crispy. All right, no big deal. I'm gonna grab a spoon. And good trick with bacon, grab a little bit of water in your hand and just spritz the bacon. And that helps the fat come out before it gets too crispy. So it helps render it completely. Beautiful. All right, so let's see what Imperfect sent me. This is so cool. See, it's not about produce anymore. It used to be just produce. Now they've got things like thyme. So Imperfect thyme. This is like the best pasta in the world. I, mm, I love this pasta. It's from Brooklyn. I used, to, I used to eat it all the time, as you can see. And it is just so hearty. It's unbelievable pasta. I'm not using it today, but I'm saving it for tomorrow. Bread, beautiful. What else we got? Potato, I'll use that. Onion, I'll use that. And garlic, I'll use that. Oh, and celery. God, this is some good stuff. Always seasonal, always delicious. I love it. All right. That was loud. I'm gonna do one more potato. I like potato. Okay, so bacon is doing its thing. Simply, simply put, we're kind of making a base for this imperfect chowder. So, I'm gonna take one of these celeries, I'm gonna cut the bottom off, wash this later, save it for stock. But for this, I'm just gonna cut it kind of lengthwise in half into little strips. The smaller you get it, the better. I don't like big chunks of celery. And then you're just gonna cut this down. So nice little pieces. And it's funny, you think about, well why would this celery like not be sold? It looks like celery. Well, there's six reasons why food would not be sold. So the first is size. If it's the wrong size, if it's too big, too small, people don't like the look of it and they avoid it. So they don't buy it, which is such a bummer. The next is asymmetry. Asymmetry means how perfect it looks, meaning if a pepper, for example, is perfectly shaped like a pepper so it stands up on its own and it doesn't fall over, which is really interesting to me. Like, you have to have a perfect pepper that stands up, otherwise it's not edible, that's crazy. So celery in. Um, the third is scarring. So when you th see things on potatoes like blemishes and scarring and things like that, people don't buy them. So grocery stores don't buy them. Such a bummer, so weird. So, scarring is the third. The fourth is, oh yeah, unknown ingredients. So, ingredients that are completely foreign to most people, so they don't buy it. I'll bet you like celery root was like that at one point. So you get, sometimes you get some ingredients that you're like, what is this? And it kind of turns you on to it, which I absolutely love. All right, five is discoloration, right? If something is, if you've ever seen a peach that is green, or looks like a weird color, then uh, grocery stores won't buy it, which is insanity. I don't get that either. And finally, the last one is surplus, which means there's just too much of it on the farm. And so it just goes to waste. So grocery stores, restaurants, they, they, they can't buy everything. So there's stuff that just rots in the field. So Imperfect picks up all of these things and makes them accessible to you. All right. So I've got these spuds. I actually only think I do need two. I thought I needed three, but 
think this is enough. So they're all about the same size and again, completely imperfect in the way I'm chopping them. As long as they're around the same size, it doesn't mean they all have to be perfect cubes. So I'm gonna add my potatoes into the celery. Beautiful. It smells really good. And I'm gonna add a good shake of thyme, like a tablespoon of dried thyme right in there. Beautiful. You getting that, Howard? Yep. That looks really good. All right, so that's all cooking up, looking great. And now we're gonna grab some garlic. I'm just gonna grab a little bit, just one is all you need, because honestly, it's more about the clams than anything. You don't wanna overpower it. And I know this seems weird, but I'm just gonna throw it in whole. You'll fish it out later, no pun intended, but it's just enough to kind of give a little perfume of the garlic vibe in there, which I love. All right, so to this chowder, we're gonna add some liquid stuff. I've got white wine, a glug for some sweetness. Beautiful. And then two more wet ingredients, clam juice. You can buy it anywhere. This stuff is nectar. It is so good. I love clam juice. So this is literally just the juice that's stored inside the clam. And it literally smells like the ocean. I mean, it just, you smell just a little bit of it and it just takes you straight to the seaside, which I love. So that goes in and then I'm gonna go with about a half a cup of cream. This is really good cream. See, see how when you tip it upside down, it doesn't come out? That means it's good cream. There's a little cream top on top. So I just grab the end of a spoon, give it a little splash. And we're gonna bring that whole thing up to a boil. All right, so while that's coming up to a boil, we're gonna talk about clams. Clams are a sad, sad piece for me because like so much of what Imperfect does, they get forgotten. Clams, everyone passes over in the grocery store. No one really cooks anymore because probably they're scared about it. You know, they are alive. They don't know how to cook it, but they're cheap and they're absolutely delicious. And I did a segment on mussels uh, a couple of recipes ago and clams are really similar. So the way I do it is when I get the clams, I put them in cold water with some salt for about 10 minutes. And they think they're in the ocean. So they kind of open up and release all their sand. So it's a way of cleaning them, right? And then I just check the clam and make sure it's closed. That there's no cracks, which these have no cracks. They look great. And I just put them right in to my chowder. So I just check them, no cracks, beautiful. If you see a crack, they just go in the garbage and it just means that they've opened up and they're probably not alive anymore. You really gotta cook these when they're alive and delish. All right, these all look really good. And look how much sand, Howard, if you can get in the water itself, how much sand is left in there. Isn't that crazy? So you just really wanna make sure you take that extra step and kind of we call purging the clams. Um, get them all clean, ready to go. So, give this a little rinse. I'm gonna grab another pan, stick it on top, and that's gonna steam those little buggies. Have you ever had steamers? Yeah. Yeah, that's like an East Coast thing, like steamers, right? You just get a big bucket of clams with some butter. I love it. Speaking of butter, we're gonna make a garlic bread. And uh, there's a lot of ways you can make a garlic bread. Uh, this is my version, take it or leave it. Totally up to you. I'm gonna cut this baguette into about thirds. I love a good, don't you love good fresh bread? It's so good. And then I'm gonna cut those in half. So almost like you're making a sandwich, right? Then what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna take my butter, and I don't mean a little bit of butter. I mean, I'd like call your doctor, there might be issues, amount of butter, okay, in the pan. You can use olive oil if you're not in a butter thing, but butter really takes it over the top. And we are going to kind of melt that butter. The second it's melted, we're gonna infuse it with a crap ton of garlic, okay? So with the garlic, what we're gonna do is, is I'm just gonna put my weight on it. Let's <laughs> just smash it, awesome. And then grab anything heavy, right? It could be a wine bottle, it could be the back of your knife, it doesn't really matter. And just kinda smash the garlic, right? We're not gonna chop it, leave it in its paper completely, but just open it up. 
the paper actually has a lot of flavor. So by throwing the paper away, you're actually throwing away a ton, a ton of extra garlickiness that we want. And we want this bread so garlicky that if you were on a date and tried to make out with someone, they would deny you. That's how garlicky I want this garlic bread. So, with the peels and the garlic, right into the butter. Beautiful. You can do that, right, Howard? I can, but not on a date. Yeah, not on a date. That's do right. not do it on a date. All right, so we have our bread, and what we're essentially gonna do is, the second this butter kind of melts down, we're gonna take our bread, we're gonna stick it in there. So it's so, oh, it smells so good. So it soaks up all that butter. And then I'm gonna grab another piece of garlic. I've got this one, right? And I'm gonna leave this in the paper as well. But just cut the bottom off of it. And like an eraser, we're gonna rub it. So you're getting garlic in the butter, and you're getting garlic right on the bread itself. Really interesting. Let's check our chowder. Oh yeah, so see how it's starting to come up to a boil? So these clams, when they open up, this chowder is ready to go. So we still got some time, but it's all gonna come together really fast. Oh, you can see it kind of happening right there. Do you see that, Howard? See them kind of opening? Yeah. They're getting there. All right, how much time we got? I'm getting a little nervous on time. This one's taking me to the edge, man. This one's taking me to the edge. Now, if you have other things you wanna throw into that butter, go for it. I think I've got some, uh, I've got some thyme. So this is fresh thyme. You can use more of that dried thyme. But I've just got some fresh thyme. I'm gonna put stems and all. Again, we're after the butter. Oh, this smells so good. Now, I don't use salted butter um, because I like to control the amount of salt that goes in my food. So I'm gonna take a nice big pinch of salt right into that butter. And good couple of cranks of pep. Beautiful. So this is our imperfect garlic our imperfect clam chowder. We've got a lot of imperfect things going on. And what I love about that is like, the kitchen is not perfect. I mean, like, just zoom out for a second, Howard. I've got a mess going on in here. I've got dishes in the, in the actual, you know, sink itself. My kitchen's not perfect. I'm a chef and it's not perfect. So don't go for perfect in the kitchen. Go for imperfect. That is what you're looking for. That is homemade. I hate when things look too, too perfect or too symmetrical. To me, it looks like a machine did it, not a human. All right. Butter is done. Just smell and get in there. Oh yeah. Come on. Mm. Unbelievable. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna literally put my bread in this butter, just a couple slices, and I'm almost gonna like fry it, if that makes sense. So I'm gonna fry the, the bread until it's nice and toasty, pull it out and give it a quick rub. Make sense to you, Howard? Yeah. I am. That's, let's check our Beautiful clam chowder. Look at this. So they're just starting to open. They're looking amazing. And we're gonna kinda get a little greenery ready for it. So if you open up a piece of celery, one of the biggest parts that get thrown away are the middle part, these leaves. The leaves are so, so delicious. So I'm gonna go after the celery hearts. And they've got this kind of like bright note. They're almost like parsley, but even more vibrant, more exciting. And so I'm gonna grab all the leaves I can off this celery. And again, it goes back to Imperfect's you know, mission. Don't let anything go to waste, use it all. All right, so I'm gonna grab these leaves and I'm just gonna give them a quick chop through. I'm not so interested in the ribs right now, just a one time through. I'm gonna throw half in now to kind of infuse into my chowder. And I'll use half at the very end. Look at this, man. Is this looking insane? It's looking so good to me. I love it. I'm gonna add some salt into this chowder. Not too much because, you know, you got the clam juice that's already kind of bringing the ocean vibe. Lots of pepper, lots of pepper. You can add hot sauce if you want to this. That would be really, really good. All right. I think I have to try this. I don't think I have a choice. How much time, Howard? A minute. One minute. One minute. Ocean vibes, man. 
You're, you're on the Pacific. That's what you taste, right? You taste the sea. It's so beautiful. Oh, I love that. And then you kind of just bring it all home with some really garlicky bread and you're good to go. So, let's get a little plate. Let's plate this bad boy up. Bowl, plate. Let's start, I need a ladle. Do I have a ladle? I don't even know if I have a ladle. God, typical, typical Joel. I'm gonna use a mug. Get in there. And just kind of dump all those clams, all that vegetable, all that bacon, right out. Oh, that looks so good. One more. I could, I could just eat it out of the mug. Why not? One more, one more, one more. Got it. Beautiful. Throw a little bit more greenery on top. Then grab that garlic bread, which is nice and soft at this point, but also crusty on the bottom. Woo, it's hot. Time's up. God, I'm a little bit over. But it's worth it for this bread. And then I'm just gonna take a towel, hold the bread down, and just rub the garlic, like an eraser, over the top of it. Piece there, piece there. You've got beautiful Pacific Northwest, Seattle-inspired, imperfect clam chowder. I hope you guys love this. You can bust it out. It took just a little over 15 minutes. It's imperfect, who cares? That's what this show's all about. Um, make this one at home, and for more recipes like it, head to readyforseconds.com or, of course, Yamamoto. Yeah,